This video is a beginner's guide on how to paint a leopard Appaloosa model horse, primarily with hand painted acrylics and some mixed media. I will cover pattern design, color recipes, application, and how to paint unique Appaloosa details like mottling. In this tutorial, you will need the following assortment of paint colors in your brand of choice. I am demonstrating this in acrylics, pastels, and dry earth pigments, but you can also follow along with oil. The first is pearl white, which is an all over coverage. The second is warm pearl white, which is for the creamy parts of a horse, like the lower legs, mane, and tail. And the third is cool pearl white, which you will use for shading and muscle detail. I painted my model with an airbrush, and for this type of painting, you don't need a specialized or very expensive brush at all. However, if you want to follow along with hand painting, just be sure to thin your paints to the consistency of skim milk and apply many thin layers to avoid brush strokes. Start with an even coverage of the pearl white, which with the airbrush only took a few passes. Let that dry and then grab your Leopard Appaloosa reference to guide you as you apply the warm pearl white. Generally, you will spray this very lightly along the lower legs, top line, mane and tail, but if your horse varies a little. Finish your base color by spraying the cool white into the shadowy areas of your horse, like the belly and the lower parts of the muscle detail. Let this cure at least 24 hours or for a few days, depending on the humidity levels in your area. At this point, there are a few different ways to proceed, and which one you choose will depend on exactly what type of leopard Appaloosa you are painting, and of course, your painting style. I decided to save the mottling until I started my pattern so I would know how the pattern would affect the design of the mottling. That was my personal preference. Appaloosas can be a bit daunting even with reference, so for this model I drew out his spots with a charcoal pencil and was happy with his design. What I love about the charcoal pencil is that it's very easy to brush off with a damp cotton swab. During this stage, you'll want to grab a hair growth chart along with your Appaloosa reference to guide you as you place your spots. I get mine from this book. If you look really closely at each spot, you will find they are not perfect circles or ovals. In fact, when I paint Appaloosas, I apply each spot with individual strands of paint that mimic the darker hairs that make up each spot. After marking the pattern in charcoal, then proceed to mix a medium gray color and fill in the final spots. Let that dry and then remove the charcoal with a damp cotton swab. And here's another thing that varies by artist and something you'll want to choose according to your painting reference. That is, there are two ways to apply the spots. One is to make them a little darker than the reference, which is what I'm doing here, and then lighten them with washes of white until they are just right. You would then finish by topping off with the darkest middle spots. The other method is to mix a very light gray and slowly build up darker layers of gray, then adding that final darkest layer. If you choose this method, make sure you thin your paints a little so you can eliminate brush strokes. If you choose to work darker to lighter as I am doing, just be extra sure to remove that charcoal pencil before you add your white washes, otherwise the charcoal will streak. Also don't thin your paints so much that the pigment pulls into rings. If you love pastels, this is a great opportunity to lighten up the spots with pearly and off-white pastel colors instead of using acrylic washes. Once I was really happy with my spotting, I took a break to focus on the pink base for the modeling. Make sure you add pinking to the muscle, eyes, and groin area, as these are the spots on Appaloosas that have modeling. Seal this layer with a matte spray. 
At this stage, I also mix some Titan Buff and Pearl White to add some more modeling. This was applied to the very end of the muzzle and the groin. I sealed again and brushed on some earth pigment over the mottling to pink it up again. For my spots mixture, I mixed carbon black and Van Dyke brown to create a warm black. The Van Dyke is dark enough, however, that you could use it alone if you want a little warmer of Napalusa. Using a fine detail brush with long strands, paint the spots hair by hair. Aside from your Appaloosa reference, it helps to have a hair growth chart to help with this stage. I also began painting the mane and tail as I worked on my spots using the same mixture, but then further. I also had a bit of white to create a gray mixture for lighter hair strands, and I finished with some washes of thin Titan Buff to warm up the mane and tail. If needed, you can lighten up the body spots with a dark gray mixture or by brushing on more white pastel. I did a little of both of the spots on my body to make my model a little less dark in contrast. Getting your spots perfect can certainly be a back and forth process. sure to mix a pink color as your second color right after the white base. This is for your sclera and on Appaloosa it's quite noticeable so be sure to let it show when you apply your black layer next. I usually paint the most pink in the very far corner of the eye and blend it along into the white so that some of the white will show when the eye is complete. And there you have it, all the crucial steps you need to get started in painting Appaloosas. Just make sure to have good reference and give yourself time to practice, and you too can make wonderful Appaloosa model horses.